Game started. Chego from the U.S. Let's see what we get here. We get <clears throat> G3. <laughs> I don't know what to do against G3. So my rating made it over 1400 again. Of course, every time I say that, um, I start losing, so we'll see. Uh, let's see. So the pawn is defended. But um, well, maybe I'll go for a d5, c5 kind of setup here. Or maybe I'll go with the um, <clears throat> uh, semi slop type of setup then, since he's immediately uh, counterattacking here. Oh, he really doesn't want me to take back with a pawn. Well, if I go here with the bishop, um, this pawn is loose. So let's play here with the knight. And just to allow me to take, take back with the pawn. And now he can come into um, um, b5. I can't really stop that. The square is guarded by the queen at the moment. The square is guarded by the bishop. To avoid losing a tempo on the bishop, I'll just play bishop e7, knight f6, and castle. So I unpin the knight. And after the knight is unpinned, I can play knight to, uh, knight to b6, if he lets me. Playing the pawn to h6 or a6 to try and keep the knight out of b5 wouldn't have worked because of the pin on the pawn. The rook is not defended over here, so that's why I avoided I avoided the move bishop d6 because uh, knight to b5 is an immediate tempo on that bishop. Okay, but now uh, I think I'm fine. We have a symmetrical pawn structure. Um, I get to move my knight. My only problem piece really is the uh, light squared bishop here, as in so many, so many of these queen pawn positions. I can actually gain some space here, can't I? I can play. Um, no, I guess I can't. I cannot play. I wanted thinking about the move d4 and then uh, e5 to support it, but uh, pawn on e5 is not defended. Should I do anything about the move uh, a5 hitting my knight? The knight doesn't have any great squares. Um, but if he plays a5, I guess I can go knight to a8 and then back to uh, c7. And I just didn't see the value right now in playing a5 myself. Might be a weakness later. Eh, might be good. I mean, it holds back his pawns. Hard to say. It's one of them symmetrical uh, positions. Um, so I have this kind of threat. It's not a threat yet, but it's getting there, of playing um, d4 there and winning a knight. So d4 and he takes is what would happen now. So I need to defend that square. So I could play e4, knight takes, and then, uh, I mean, e5, knight takes e5, and d4 hitting his knight. Kind of a fancy way to play. Let's see. Ah, just a simple move. I'll retreat the bishop, <clears throat> and now I am directly, directly threatening um, a d4 there. Sometimes people miss that. You make a retreating move and they don't realize that you've uh, actually done something useful. <laughs> okay, so he gets a pawn for his piece and he gets uh, he has good pieces, so I mean, he has compensation. Not Certainly not worth the whole pawn, but uh, it's worth something. Okay, so let's uh, let's start rearranging my pieces. Get the bishop out in a more active role. Maybe play knight to um, d5. So 
So these pieces are okay where they are. They're holding up uh, my king side. It's uh, this knight here is uh, the piece that needs uh, a better square and something to do. And uh, yeah, he goes right after that uh, weakness on c6. Knight takes, pawn takes. Yeah, you know, it's not really losing material. I'm going to uh, go after his bishop. So if he takes, I'm going to take back with the pawn. He may be wanting to keep this knight here for some attacking purpose, too. He may not want to move it. Yeah, he just retreated his bishop. Okay. So if that's the case, now I can um, I can counterattack his knight here somehow. Maybe like this, bishop d6, queen c7, threatening to uh, take it. And of course you always have to watch out for sacrifices on f7 or uh, g6, but I don't see the weaknesses yet. Sometimes you sack on f7 and win a pawn on e6 and get a, an attack going that way. This yeah, or you can go after my uh, bishop here, which is uh, somewhat awkwardly placed. Well, let's go here with the queen, though. This comes with an immediate threat. He's got to respond here. You can just defend it with uh, f4 or d4, or you can take. Now I could take with the queen. Um, or the pawn. Kind of like taking with the pawn. It opens up the um, B file and helps keep the uh, diagonal a little bit clogged up here. And uh, I wasn't sure if there might have been. There might have been some kind of tactic against my queen along this diagonal. So he's going right after this pawn, yeah. And. Uh, He's got this B pawn defended, but he could play um, B5. I was thinking, I play Rick B8, he plays B5, and I can't take because of the pin. So, where does my queen want to go? Um, I mean, I'll just run over here to E7. Ah, and that also puts pressure on the uh, B pawn here. Knight, knight, bishop. So if we end up trading the B-pawn for the C-pawn, that'll be a fine trade for me, I think. Um, because we're sort of exchanging weaknesses. He goes with the queen. Interesting. Okay, so I should um, Check. take off a pair of rooks and play rook here to b8 and chase his queen, see where it wants to go. And maybe I should play uh, h6 just to be safe so I don't get uh, checkmated on the back rank. If he coordinates with like queen to, uh, or, no, or now there's coordination here, he can uh, threaten rook here, rook takes, queen here, queen back, I, I can defend with the knight or the queen. Still, um, in the future, I may want to uh, be able to have a little more freedom to move my pieces about. Let's see, is he threatening a rook invasion first before I decide if I have the leisure to move my pieces? Uh, his rook could come to this square. That's about it. Um, Yeah, let's just go ahead and give myself some lift. That'll that'll come in handy in the long run. And if he plays rook here, um, I can actually uh, lift up my rook. I can play rook to uh, b6 if he plays rook c6. Takes, knight takes, or takes here, rook takes, or check and king 
runs or even the night night blocks. It's all possible. Be nice to get a knight to uh, this square here, <clears throat> d4, hitting hitting um, e2 there. Okay, so he took care of one of his weaknesses. That's probably a good idea. So I wanted to play this move knight to um, b5, uh, hitting his queen, covering c6, knight b4. So knight b4, uh, and his queen will move. And his queen will want to stay in touch with the um, d pawn now that it's uh, lightly defended. So knight here, or he could exchange it, but that's okay. Knight here, queen here, and then what? Still have not found a great square for this knight. Huh? Maybe, but I can leave it here for a move or two. I mean, it's defended. The knight is defended on, um, okay, just took it off, well, that simplifies my job. Check. Check. Um, so why don't I um, block with the queen here? See if he wants to go into a losing end game. <laughs> and I can defend my bishop with the move um, a5. And I wasn't sure I wanted to put my king on h7. He might always have this threat of pawn to, uh, <clears throat> yeah, pawn to e5 and uh, bishop e4 check. Well, as long as the knight here, though, it's, uh, well, pawn to e5 would also chase the knight away. Okay, so what next? This pawn here, yeah, the pawn on um, <clears throat> the pawn on d4 should be a target. It's on a dark square. If he plays e5, yeah, he didn't play that. If he played e5, I was just going to play knight to d5. Okay, so he gets a passed pawn. But uh, my knight now has a secure home here. And let's see, two attackers, two defenders. And also just um, blockade this. Well, he gets another check if I do that. How about something more active here? This uh, hits his queen, and it hits the uh, a-pawn. And if he goes for the check, uh, I can go to h7 now, I think. I think it's safe. The bishop, the knight is covering uh, check. e4, so should be okay. Hmm, let's see if he has other ideas. He's very uh, consistent and uh, persisting. Persisting, persistent maybe is a better word. He can uh, bring his queen back here, which would guard both his pawns, but I would trade. Oh, uh, well, I would have to check first. <laughs> that end game is, uh, is winning. Okay, he didn't play that. Trade the pawn here. Uh, I need to make sure I can stop the pawn before it queens. It's not so clear. The knight's not particularly well placed. Takes, takes, uh, knight, yeah, knight to uh, e8 immediately, and then to uh, c7 would, would solve solve my problem. Okay, let's let's grab the pawn here so that <clears throat> now I have a I have a passed pawn, and then I can start so I can start moving it. Ah, he's guarding this square with the bishop. That's nice. I was about to bring my queen back to uh, <clears throat> d7 there next. That was Server my plan. announcement. Uh, but now I've got this check. Check. And because he left off defending the d-pawn, I can, I can pick this up. Check. Ah, with check. So that's even better. This will go into a hopeless ending where I'm a piece and a pawn up. <laughs> He's still going to play. Okay. 
check. At some point, you don't really have to play anymore. It's okay to resign. It's not a problem. I mean, there's. Uh, you may want to make sure your opponent really knows how to queen that pawn and checkmate you. Um, I don't see any need to give away pawns. I mean, I could move quickly and just push this pawn, but um, he could take on f7. I didn't see any need to allow that. Well, I don't. Maybe he's going to sacrifice the uh, bishop for the pawn and then see if I can mate with knight and bishop, <laughs> which is not so easy uh, to do, although uh, I can do it, actually. White resigns. Okay. There's enough pawns that he might not have to, uh, <laughs> might not have to force me to prove that. I can... It's simpler. It's simpler to use my extra pieces to win a pawn and then uh, queen that and mate that way rather than uh, uh, giving up on the pawns and trying mating with the bishop and knight. Okay, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I will upload this and do a postmortem as usual. See you guys later. Bye.